Sales in Kansas City, 6.30 the broadcast time on WTMJ. EMG News Time now exactly 2.09. Our next news will be at 2.30, special reports at once. I'm Kevin Fisher, News Radio 620 WTMJ. Continues with Jim Eltoff and Andy Beck on News Radio 620 WTMJ, your information station. It's 2.09. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. I'm Jim Eltoff. And I'm Andy Beck. I have an idea what we're about to talk about. Well, You'll only vaguely. Are you in the mood for a story? Do I hear sure. a story? Sure. I ran across a story so fantastic that I had to hear more. Wow. It's an archaeological mystery involving thousands of ancient Greek, Roman, and Egyptian artifacts, a mysterious, perhaps haunted cave, the long lost burial sites of Alexander the Great, Ptolemy, and Cleopatra and an ancient hieroglyphic language that no one has been able to decipher. And the real kicker is, it all takes place in Salem, Illinois. Get out! Salem, Illinois. All right, to start us off and to do justice to this story, we have a gentleman with us on the TMJ Live Line, a man who discovered a cave filled with unimaginable archaeological treasures in Salem, Illinois. His name is Russell Burroughs, and he's with us now on the telephone. Mr. Burroughs, good afternoon, and welcome to WTMJ in Milwaukee. Yeah, thank you. Saw the piece in the trivia the other day, and I just, uh, I was just wowed. So I wanted to get you to, to tell Andy and I and our listeners your story. Now, this goes back to, what, 1976? You're out looking for Civil War artifacts in the woods with a metal detector? Mm, no, it's 1982. 82, all right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and something happened. You stepped into something? or? Yeah, kind of fell in a hole. Fell in a hole. <laughs> okay, well, we've all been there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Well, uh, it, uh, it's, I, as a result of falling in this hole, I... Uh, I began to, uh, and what I what I saw in it, uh, I began to search out a cave, uh, or search out the area that I was in, mm -hmm. and uh, located this cave, uh, which uh, had been uh, closed up, and uh, and all that sort of thing. And uh, one thing led to another, and here we are talking to you. What what was in this cave? Well, there there are uh, there are tablets. Uh, when I say tablets, I mean uh, stone tablets mm -hmm. uh, with uh, portraits or, or uh, petroglyphs on them, uh, 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 a script which appears to be uh, Phoenician, Nubian, Libyan, something, Egyptian, along with Ogham. Uh, and uh, to date, no one has been able to, uh, uh, to determine what it is. And, and you took these tablets to who? Well, took them to a lot of people. Uh, they've uh, they've they've been looked at by uh, uh, some uh, some people who are, have, have got a lot of smarts. Uh, Cyclone Covey is professor emeritus at Wake Forest University. Uh, Joseph Mahan is director of the Institute for Study of Ancient American Cultures. Uh, Warren Cook. Uh, now dead was a uh, anthropologist at uh, Castleton State College in Vermont. And what did they say? Uh, they said, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> well, I leave it to those scholars, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, Not much for the egghead. Now, is there? I mean, you're convinced that these artifacts, whatever all this stuff is, is genuine, real stuff from ancient Egypt and Nubia and Greece and Rome and all that stuff. What the hell is it doing in a cave in Illinois? <laughs> Well, uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm not qualified to make any such determination, but uh, uh, there is, uh, there was such a thing as diffusion. Uh, this is when uh, the ancient, uh, the ancients began to travel all over the world, and there's no question but that they could do it because, you know, the, Phoenici the Phoenicians and Carthaginians uh, were were great sea people, right? You know. And uh, getting here is, is really no problem. Well, but that would that might work if you found this stuff on the Jersey Shore or something. But Salem, Illinois, is not exactly have an ocean view, no. right? I mean, if, if you're an ancient and you <laughs> find this, ocean view, Illinois. that's right. You find this new world. What you're going to trek in a thousand miles to hide all your stuff in a cave somewhere? 
uh, that's about how far they would have gone. Uh, of course, it's not in Salem, Illinois. Okay. It's it's much much closer to the Ohio River. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, if these people, whoever they were. Uh, came in to the Gulf of Mexico uh, and came up the Mississippi River to the forks of the Ohio and then took off up the Ohio River. Why uh, they they could very easily have wound wound up here. I I have you know I've often wondered uh, why not in Louisiana or Florida or sure. you know somewhere like that. Uh, I don't know. Is this a tomb? Do you think? Oh yeah. And There's, what makes you think it's a tomb? No, I, I Are there know. dead bodies in it? Any uh, mummies? Yeah, yeah. They're mummies? Uh, well, no, not mummies, skeletons. Uh. How many? Uh, there are, I believe, 13 burial crypts. Were there any weapons or pieces of weapons, like arrows found around the bodies? Um, that? Yeah, yeah, bronze. But uh, these, these, the ones that I saw are, uh, are bronze. Now, some people have said, Russ, that Cleopatra, Ptolemy, and Alexander the Great are buried there. Where's, where's that? Where's that at? <laughs> well, well, uh, that, I think that's wishful thinking. Mm. Uh, I uh, uh, Cyclone Covey says possibly Alexander Helios. Uh, and uh, you got to remember, there's about 500 years difference between Alexander Helios and Alexander the Great. Mm. Uh, Cleopatra fits into the same time frame. Uh, I have to ask the same question. Uh, what, the the you know. what do these pictographs depict? Oh, mainly uh, there are some uh, some of, of what could be construed as, as gods. Uh, there are some of uh, uh, a lion-headed uh, man or woman. Uh, a bird or, or a uh, or a bug-headed woman, uh, uh, the bull-headed man, mm -hmm. uh, this, this type of thing. And then there are very nicely done portraits of, uh, of both men and women. Has there been any carbon dating on this? Well, you can't carbon date stone. Uh, oh. the, to carbon date something, it must have at one time been alive. Well, what about the skeletons? Yeah. Beg The skeletons. Well, yeah, they, those could be carbon dated. Uh, we have a problem there. What? the uh, law. We have some pretty tough archaeological laws in, in Illinois. And uh, the, uh, the one thing that myself and my associates are dead bang opposed to is uh, disturbing burials. The law says we've got, uh, if we apply for permits to do an excavation, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, everything belongs to the state. Uh, all human remains, all artifacts. To the state? Uh, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, even on private property. Even though you found this stuff? Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, is it correct for us that no person but yourself has ever been in this cave? No, that's not so. Okay. No. Uh, you brought you brought people there? Or? Uh, well, the uh, man who, who owned the property, he died a year ago this past January, uh, had been in many times with me mm -hmm. uh, and his nephew. Uh, but uh, now uh, I'm the uh, I'm the only one now who knows where it is. Why not bringing in some archaeologists to examine the site? I mean, there are scholars who have seen pictures of the stuff or read reports about it and say that it's all fake. Why not get a couple of a couple of big shot professors and? bring them to the site and say, okay, look it over. That's a good question. And uh, the answer to it really is simple. Uh, the, uh, the part about uh, these archaeologists saying it's all fake, uh, I don't know how they can say that because uh, they have never seen it. Hmm. Uh, they, or the, they've never seen the artifacts. And where are the artifacts? Well, they still in the cave? Place. Oh, no. No, they're uh, safely tucked away. Where? Uh, <laughs> you can trust her, really. I'll vouch for her. Just between us. Uh, my memory fails me. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, uh, you're talking with Russell Burroughs, the discoverer of, of Burroughs Cave, I guess is what it's called. I don't know. All right. Uh, now, there are also ghosts in this story? Uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, there are some strange things in, the, in that cave. Oh, do tell. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I do tell. What, are, what, what, have you, what have you seen around there? I haven't uh, seen anything. It's what mainly what I have heard and felt. 
and what was it? Well, uh, presence. Uh, you can you can feel a presence. This is inside the cave. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, have even gone so far as to uh, touch. Uh, so, I mean, there's no question about about that. There's something there. You felt something touch you. Mm -hmm. And that may not be legal in Illinois. <laughs> Were you awake? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, one time I was sticking my head in a, one of the burial crypts, uh, the one that contains a female skeleton to, and the skeleton of two children. Uh -huh. And I felt this big kiss on my cheek, and I heard, <laughs> <laughs> I heard a voice which said, Where have you been for so long? Come on, really? And, and with that, I turned around in the place that I could hardly get into, thinking someone's in here with me. Mm. <laughs> and you ran out? No. But there was nobody there. There was nobody there, huh? Mm. No. Have you been on Unsolved Mysteries? <laughs> no, and I don't want to be. <laughs> Why not? Uh, well, this, this, things like that tend to, uh, uh, to get this, something like this blown all out of proportion. Okay. Uh, now the uh, going back to to what you were saying about archaeologists, there's only one archaeologist who has or anthropologist who has seen this material and has said it's uh, fraudulent, mm -hmm. and that's Robert Pickering. He said that because of a friend of his who was involved with another organization in Vincennes, Indiana, who was a judge over there, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, those artifacts supposedly went to the uh, Field Museum in Chicago for study, they never left town. Mm -hmm. uh, the other people, the one over at Kirksdale and uh, a couple of others, they've never seen these artifacts. So I, uh, it's the same old thing, the establishment. <clears throat> they, uh, uh, they're very comfortable in their situation right now. Columbus discovered America. That's what's been taught for years mm -hmm. and years. And yeah. uh, they don't want anything to upset the apple cart. What about this this language, these hieroglyphics or pictographs or whatever they are that you found on some of this stuff and apparently nobody can decipher? decode or decipher? Well, it, it really kind of knocks the, the theory of modern day epigraphy uh, into a cocked hat. Uh, if you look at the Phoenician, Carthaginian, uh, Libyan, Nubian, Egyptian uh, 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 script. Now, I'm not talking about hieroglyphs. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's not a, an iota of difference between those, all of those, the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew script. They're all virtually the same. And uh, so what you've got to do is you've got to be very fluent in these ancient languages. But there must be people who are, who can read that stuff, right? Well, there was one fellow who was supposed to be just fantastic at it, uh, Dr. Barry Fell. Uh, and... Uh, who claim to be 90% uh, correct all of the time. The truth of the matter is, if an epigrapher is 10% correct, he's done a fantastic job. You've got, you've got to know all. Of, you've, you've got to know all these languages, and you've got to know mainly where these things come from, so that you can uh, you can determine the language and apply it to the script. This is something that they don't know. And uh, the, the the established da, scholars da, da, don't want da, to get da. near this because when they do, as I said, it's going to knock what they've been teaching uh, for years and what they were taught into a cocked hat. So uh, you know we've we've got problems, and uh, I don't know where we're going to go with them. You know. Well, that's what I want to know is what are you going to do with all this stuff with this find of yours? I mean, if it is what you feel it is what it appears to be mm -hmm. it, it's unbelievable it's fantastic that Carthaginians or Phoenicians or Nubians or whatever sail up the Mississippi and drop off a whole cache of stuff this would change our thousands perception of years of ago sure it would I mean it would be phenomenal stuff what are you going to do with what you've got where do you go with this well stuff? I, I'm, I'm going to move to Colorado <laughs> why I'll get the heck away from this yeah. <laughs> uh, no I, uh, I I don't know uh, I, I can't answer that question because uh, we do we come back then to the law yeah and there, there's no way that uh, that I'm going to uh, to do, to see a burial, any burial, disturbed. I, I can see no reason taking these people out of their burials and taking them up to Springfield, Illinois, and storing them in the basement uh, in a cardboard box. Well, but you could take like a little finger bone or something. Nobody would miss that, right? They've all been dead a couple thousand years. And... Well, yeah, <laughs> at, at least that. 
but uh, that's not what the law says. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've yeah. got in order to do this, we've got to have a permit from the state, yeah. from the preservation agency. And at that point in time, the state of Illinois assumes jurisdiction of the site. And when the excavation begins, the state owns the site and all contents to its furthest extent. Could this be a prank? Could this be a bunch of bored, wacky college students, I don't know, deciding to do something goofy? That well, you stumbled upon? I, I would think they have, would have gotten tired of their prank long before they would have been able to uh, uh, to get all of this done. We're talking about thousands upon thousands of, of these tablets. Mm. Uh, just one, for instance, this past week, a uh, week before last, I was told by a sculptor, an excellent sculptor in St. Louis, uh, who I, I asked him to look at one of these and uh, tell me how long it would take to do it yeah. in marble. And he said it would take 100 hours. Mm. And uh, that's not including the polishing. And then there are thousands of things like that. So it would have been a massive, for somebody to do for a joke, and then not, like, spring it on somebody to just leave it there, doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, first off, they, uh, whoever this was would have had to have been certain that I was going to fall into yeah. that hole, yeah. and then that I was going to find this cave, and then that I would be willing to crawl into a cave that uh, has been filled with silt, uh, leaving anywhere from 12 to 18 inches of headroom. Well, what were you doing out there? Well, I, was, uh, I wasn't looking actually for Civil War artifacts. Typical newspaper, they never get anything right. <laughs> Uh, I I like to metal tech the old homestead. homestead. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just as soon find a uh, uh, an oxen uh, shoe as I would a uh, twenty dollar gold piece. Yeah. Now that's a lie. Of course it is. But that's our, so is everything uh, that's else. Radio for you. So is everything uh, else. Russell, what, where does this Ptolemy Productions come in? There's this company that's been formed, and I'm not quite sure I understand their involvement in all of this. Uh, well. Their involvement is, is simple. Have you been in contact with them yet? No, but we're going to talk to them later. I want to because there's somebody there who yeah. says, "Ah, oh, this is Cleopatra." We're sure about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, how'd you get your number? They, uh, they claim to uh, they claim to be able to uh, decipher these tablets. <clears throat> and uh, uh, to give you an example, the uh, guy that runs this production is a high school dropout. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, his partner, who's supposed to be doing the ciphering, uh, uh, is, uh, may have attended a semester or two of junior college up in, uh, I believe, New Hampshire. Or something. Well, are they trying to market the stuff or something? I'm not quite sure what they're what they're about. Their their object is to uh, make a movie, uh, uh, sell T-shirts with Burroughs Cave on it. Yeah, uh, Burroughs Cave. In, <laughs> and, oh yeah, America. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, just a quick question, Mr. Burroughs, how do you earn your living? Burroughs Cave uh, T-shirt. I, uh, I have uh, my own woodworking business. I sell artifacts on the side. We appreciate you joining us today. Fascinating story. Yeah, terrific yeah. story, Russell. Well, if, uh, to get the true story, you've got to read the book. And the book is yeah. called uh, <laughs> Mystery Cave of Many Faces. <laughs> the Mystery Cave of yeah, Many Faces. Yeah, that's true. How do people get it? Is it a regular <laughs> wearer? Well, you can get it from uh, the uh, publisher, Fred Reedholm, up in Marquette, Michigan. Uh, they can get a copy from me or they can order it from uh, uh, Adventures Unlimited. That's David Childress' uh, uh, book organization. Adventures Unlimited. Yeah, in Kempton, Illinois. Okay, uh, very right. good. Thanks so I, much. I to get a plug in. Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, Listen, Mr. Burroughs, thank you very much for your time. A fascinating story. Appreciate it. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I couldn't tell you more. All right, thank you. Russell Burroughs, the discoverer of the legendary Burroughs Cave, thousands yes, of cover. ancient artifacts, maybe Cleopatra's tomb, Alexander the Great, Ptolemy. We're going to take a break, and we're going to talk to the head of Ptolemy Productions and find out cool. what they're all about. Of course, that break will include news. Absolutely. Stay tuned. Right now in Milwaukee, it's 63 degrees. Sports Central, 6 o'clock tonight with Len Casper and Dennis Krause, and then at 6.30, Brewer Baseball, as they are in Kansas City to take on the Royals. Right here on WTMJ. TMJ News Time 2.36, our next news... 3 o'clock at the Greenhouse, special reports at once. I'm Kevin Fisher, News Radio 620, WTMJ. News 620, WTMJ. And Cleopatra. And Cleopatra. So we heard from Russell Burroughs, not walking around in 82 near Salem, Illinois, falls in a hole, discovers a huge cave. A near Salem, trunk. Illinois. He wouldn't buy it. Thousands of ancient artifacts. Carthaginian, Egyptian, Greek, Roman. Did in Salem, Illinois? Come on! 
funny yet. How could it not? Be? How could this be? See, we had talked to these guys. I don't know. We Wait, gave him. Know. We gave them yeah, Burles' yeah, number. Monster to you? No. Not really. <laughs> we There's a hook the back. TMJ Live Line now. Two guests on behalf of a company based in Melbourne, Florida, called Ptolemy Productions. Florida. Harry Hubbard is the president of Ptolemy Productions. George Lodge is their public relations director and a business manager. And we're going to try and find out where they come into this whole story and what they think all this stuff is about. And gentlemen, good afternoon. Thanks for your time and welcome to Milwaukee. You forgot to mention Alexander is also on the air with you. <laughs> and Alexander, the, uh, pretty, the pretty good, the not yeah, the great. <laughs> How do you guys in Ptolemy fit in with all of this and what do you think all this stuff is? Um, we we have a company down here that we form for the decipherments of the stones, basically. We've, uh, Paul Schifranca, who is our language expert, has deciphered the language on the stones that Russ has pulled out of the cave. Mm. And um, it, it was such a, a big story that we copyrighted it and and, uh, and trademarked it with the U.S. copyrights and with U.S. trademark. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was about two years ago. And since then, we have been trying to find the truth of where the stones came from, if they actually came from Illinois or where Russell... Burroughs actually found them. Well, let's say that they came from this cave in Illinois where Russell says he found them. What do these things say? And what does all this stuff mean? I mean, how on earth would this stuff, if it's authentic, have gotten into the Midwest? I'll let Harry answer that. Well, um, first of all, we have to go back. Um, uh, when uh, Mr. Burroughs claims that he was fell into a hole, this is all a... Uh, just a concocted story. He was, he was actually a treasure hunter, and he had seen this place um, has been recorded in, in uh, treasure atlases, uh, millions of issues all across the country uh, since the late 50s. But and there have been rumors of some kind of archaeological dig there or something? Well, there have been uh, archaeological digs pretty much in the entire area at different points in, time, in history. And he simply uh, uh, purchased a uh, metal detector that had this... Uh, uh, a caption, and he went and checked it out, and he found uh, this what what it is that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we had no reason. We didn't know who any of these people were. Uh, that me. Uh, this is Harry speaking. Yeah. I'm a book collector, and uh, um, I order books from everywhere. And pretty much this uh, this story kept coming up in different books from different companies. And uh, then I met Paul Shafranka, and he was deciphering some other stuff for us. And uh, he, you know, he just, you know, had a look at it and made stabs at it for about six, eight months. Based on samples of these, this writing that was in the book or in some of the books? In some of the books, yes, okay. sir. And then uh, additional photographs that we were to acquire as time drew on. Of the actual artifacts. And when we had, um, when we had made the decipherments, uh, I, we made a video of it. And I took the video and showed it to Mr. Burroughs, and he completely went over the edge. He uh, freaked out. He, um, uh, you know, he said that he was going to take us now to the uh, land, the, the mythical landowner, which he never knew. And it was just became one lie after another. The man is a um, is a compulsive liar. He suffers from delusion, and he's uh, uh, in need of psychiatric help. No so I mean, you guys aren't like you guys aren't like partners or anything. I guess. <laughs> no, we have no associations yeah. with okay. Russ Burroughs. Well, he didn't seem to want to have any with you either. But <laughs> and you're both a part of his story, which is strange. We uh, we we blew his story, and uh, we uh. began to tell people associated with him. Uh, just a few of the lies he had been telling them, and so much as that uh, uh, that he knew the landowner, that he was that he had permission to sell these stones, which he did not. He's uh, pretty much a common thief and a tomb looter. All right, well let, let's leave Russell here for and all that for a different time. You are the guys that tell me saying these are the this is the tomb of Cleopatra Alexander the Great and Ptolemy. How, where does that? Where do you get that from? I mean, how could that be that someone like Alexander the Great or Cleopatra would well, wind the, up taking a dust bath in Central Illinois? <laughs> well, the a couple of the first tablets that were deciphered said Ptolemy the First of Egypt, and then another one that was deciphered pretty much at the same time said uh, depicted as sworn by Jupiter to belong to his forefathers. Uh, to represent his forefathers, the Ptolemies of Egypt. And then it had this Helios character. Yeah. So we go through history to find this Helios, and sure enough, there's one that pops up. It was a missing son of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. He ends up missing from history at about age eight. And, uh, uh, you know, we there were there are tablets that exist that have uh, 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 Alexander Helios at different ages of his life in different costumes, mm -hmm. as a priest, as a, as a warrior, as a this, as a that, and it talks about him. He's uh, he's on many many of the artifacts, but he was assisted by his uh, 
brother-in-law. Well, but I'm going to carve in here Franklin D. Roosevelt. Doesn't make me a Democrat. It's a dime. I mean, <laughs> but here's this picture, and wow, that's, you know, you're going to find this on my body someday, and you're going to say, oh, it must be the long-lost Roosevelt son. Well, I mean, these are powerful and important uh, and famous people of the ancient world. It only figures that they're likeness or their story would be written and would be on coins and tablets and all that stuff. Well, we have stones that, um, one, the first Alexander tablet was said King Alexander of Pella. Pella is where Alexander was born. Yeah. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, several other stones talk about uh, Alexander being in this crypt. Uh, one of the most significant stones that I think is uh, it says, Beloved of the Gods, Queen Cleopatra, Mother of Helios the King. And it has a very good rendition of Cleopatra. Uh, we have uh, tablets of um, Julius Caesar. It's basically a who's who of ancient history. We have uh, Pyrrhus of Ipirus. There is um, uh, Mithridates, Hannibal. There's carvings of all these people. Who's who of ancient history? Now you Atlantis. say we have. Where are these artifacts? Um, Russell sold several of them off. To we have, uh, we've uh, gotten in touch with many of the collectors whom he he, he burns bridges as he goes, evidently, and uh, the reason that the scholars uh, really just sloughed this off was the way he acted towards them. Uh, many of them, like I say, they didn't, they don't want to look at any artifacts that have anything to do with uh, with uh, with this man because they know they've known and uh, of him. But you're a company that's in the business to make some money, presumably in association with these alleged artifacts. How do we know that what you're telling us is the truth? This is George talking. Um, our, Russ said that uh, uh, someone able to decipher this language would need to speak eight, eight languages and be uh, be educated in the whole bit. We, Pastor Franca, the one who did the who did the decipherment, speaks eight languages fluently and, and, and 20, writes over 20 and speaks over 20. He's educated in Austria and uh, in Europe. And he, when he came up and deciphered the language, we have the language. Finally, we have had the language. The language has been has been taken in front of uh, several people, including Cyrus Gordon, uh, Kyle McCarter, uh, John Hopkins, uh, Tony Spallforth of Newcastle at Princeton, uh, Joseph Mahan, who's now deceased, Mick Johnson from Berkeley, and nobody has doubted his decipherments. Now. These, this language was given to them on the pretext that we did, they didn't know who and where it was. Yeah. So they've all verified that the, the language has been, has been, um, is, is true, that it, it's an Etruscan language that has been decided. Well, the Chicago Tribune quotes Robert Pickering, an anthropologist from Northwestern University, who says, I've seen the stones and I thought they were pretty poor fakes. Well, Robert Pickering saw those several years ago, again, when Russ Burroughs was, was burning bridges, and he saw them through Russ Burroughs. We've had no contact with him at all. He has not seen our decipherments, nor has he seen the thousand rocks. We have currently held in our hands a thousand of different rocks and deciphered them and have seen pictures of another 1,500 and have decipherments of all of them. As far as us being played as a company to make money and, and stuff like that, I, I you know, I... I I don't know what to say about that. This is an incredible story. We are going to write books and market books about them. Mm -hmm. We have no no qualms of you know we are not going to loot the tomb and destroy it. We're going to get. We have competent people behind us to go in. Mick Johnson from Berkeley will be the first ones in the cave. We have an anthropologist that will check the bodies out. We have uh, carbon dating ready from the University of Pennsylvania. Wow. And we also have uh, DNA experts in Utah waiting as soon as we find the cave. Mm -hmm. Now we also have a lease on the property where the cave is. But you don't know where the cave. Yeah, is. No, that no, was in it, doubt. It's been held. It's been. It's been. It's been hit for two thousand years, and, and Russ accidentally found it. So yeah. it's been. We've got no cooperation from Russ on finding it because when somebody does find it, he'll spend many years in jail for looting a tomb and not telling a landowner. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why he is not telling anybody where it is. Okay. And it's been totally up to us to take all the evidence that we've got over the past two years Get him, George. and nail it down to this point. And we have a land lease for that point, <laughs> and uh, a digging crew out there looking for it right now. Well, Oh, so when they find something, then you feel that you'll have something to... <laughs> Russ was out squirrel hunting. What we have at this point basically squirrel is hunting. rocks, authentic, that have been checked out, a language that is authentic, that has been checked out, that claim where these rocks came from. Alexander the Great, yeah. Cleopatra, yeah. and 12 Ptolemies are there. The question is, where did they come from? We currently believe that they came from a cave in Illinois. Wow. We also have 
found actual stones on the site. Uh -huh. And there have been uh, uh, many, many different artifacts. Uh, the locals in the that area means that this is after have uh, many September of these in the house. Wow. And there have hmm. been um, gold uh, arm bandits, uh, arm bracelets found in the rivers and creeks and streams, a uh, plethora of arrowheads, pottery, even from the, um, the ravines where we're probing, we found all kinds of stuff. And uh, there's been solid gold artifacts found in the area. So we, when we went to Illinois the first time a couple of years ago, we were pretty much hunting a needle in a haystack mm -hmm. because simply Mr. Burroughs, we, we found out he was lying to us, and we figured, well, if he's lying to us, he's lying to everyone else. Yeah, he didn't want anybody to find this But the rocks speak for themselves. Let the rocks speak. And, and it's the, the thing about the language with the experts, this, uh, this archaic form of Latin, which um, uh, uses what the scholars would interpret as an Etruscan alphabet, is quite simple. Hmm. Etruscan is a form of Latin. And, Can't uh, be all that tough. Gentlemen, we got to wrap this up because we got to go, but I'll tell you what, I sure hope that there will be a follow-up on this, that there will be some developments, because I want to know if this stuff is real and how the heck it got to a cave in Illinois. Good luck to you both. Thanks Thank for being you. with us. Thank you for your time. That's Harry Hubbard, the president of Ptolemy Productions, and George Lloyd, the business Hi. manager and Paul Lodge and public relations director for Ptolemy Productions. Well, we've heard from them. We heard from Russ Burroughs. What do you think? I don't know. It's just all so improbable. It's just all so fantastic. It's too then again, a TMJ. Who could say? Bikers are headed. 252 at WTMJ. So, so Andy, what do, you, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> it's just, it's so unlikely that some ancient civilization turn would up in cross Illinois. the Atlantic, come through the Gulf, up the Mississippi, yeah. up the Ohio, and then hiked off their boats and buried a bunch of stuff in caves, including the body of Cleopatra and Alexander and Ptolemy, and then just disappeared, and then three, four thousand years later, some guy steps in a hole and finds it? I mean, how likely is that? I don't know. And I have to say, the uh, the finder of this stuff, Russ, yeah. didn't seem to be in a particular hurry to get it authenticated. Doesn't mean he's not, but uh -huh. I don't get the sense that this guy has just been probing all possible avenues to find out what this stuff is about. So there's a question whether it's real or a bunch of fake stuff? Would somebody yeah. make up thousands of fake little tablets and just bury them somewhere in a hole? Why not? Would Burroughs, and then to things. do that to be able to sell it? Or wouldn't it be easy to say, hey, that's not ancient, that's brand new? It seems like science ought to be able to tell. But nobody knows where the cave is except one person on Earth, Russ Burroughs, and he's not talking. If there is a cave. So what do you got here? A very wacky story. This just screams for a film. One <laughs> I'm other, sorry. One other uh, element of this story is how the uh, topography might have changed mm -hmm. in a couple thousand years and whether the Ohio River is where it was and whether all these channels feed into each other the way they did. Yeah, but it's in still Illinois. It's kind of Alexander If you're coming the Great. from Egypt, you're not going to keep, you're going to stop in Jersey or so Florida. You're not going to keep going and go up a river and do that whole Megillah, are you? I don't know. Someone called wanted to know how to get a hold of uh, Russ Burrow's book. And let me give you that information right now. Write it down if you want it. His book is called The Mystery Cave of Many Faces. It's available from Adventures Unlimited Publishing. They're up in the UP. And the number is area code 906. 249-3814. I'm confused. Huh.